A Talking Frog An older gentleman was playing a round of golf. Suddenly, his ball sliced and landed in a shallow pond. As he was attempting to retrieve the ball, he discovered a frog who, to his great surprise, started to speak. Kiss me, and I will change into a beautiful princess, and I will be yours for a week. He picked up the frog and placed it in his pocket. As he continued to play golf, the frog repeated its message. Kiss me, and I will change into a beautiful princess, and I will be yours for a whole month. The man continued to play his golf game. And once again, the frog spoke out, Kiss me, and I will change into a beautiful princess, and I will be yours for a whole year. Finally, the old man turned to the frog and exclaimed, At my age, I'd rather have a talking frog. A blonde was complaining to his friend about being constantly called a dumb blonde. His friend tells him, Go do something to prove them wrong. Why don't you learn all the state capitals or something? The blonde thinks this is a great idea and locks himself up for two weeks studying. The next party he goes to, some guys are making dumb blonde comments to him. He gets all indignant and claims, I'm not a dumb blonde. In fact, I can name all the state capitals. They don't believe him, so he dares them to test him. One of them says, Okay, what's the capital of Montana? The blonde smiles widely and says, That's easy. It's M. A Big Decision A six-year-old boy walked up to his father one day and announced, Daddy, I'd like to get married. His father replied hesitantly, Sure, son. Do you have anyone special in mind? Yes, answered the boy. I want to marry Grandma. Now wait a minute, said his father. You don't think I'd let you get married with my mother, do you? Why not? the boy asked. You married mine. Recently, a guy in Paris nearly got away with stealing several paintings from the Louvre. However, after planning the crime, getting in and out past security, he was captured only two blocks away when his eco-line ran out of gas. When asked how he could mastermind such a crime and then make such an obvious error, he replied, I had no Monet to buy the gas to make the van go. Two elderly couples were enjoying friendly conversation when one of the men asked the other, Fred, how was the memory clinic you went to last month? Outstanding, Fred replied. They taught us all the latest psychological techniques, visualization, association. It has made a big difference for me. That's great. What about the name of the clinic? Fred went blank. He thought and thought, but couldn't remember. Then a smile broke across his face, and he asked, What do you call that flower with the long stem and thorns? You mean a rose? Yes, that's it. Then he turned to his wife and asked, Rose, what was the name of that clinic?
A French boy said to his friend, "My younger sister is ten years old, but she can speak English rather well." His friend smiled and replied, "It isn't a strange thing. When my family traveled to London, I met a little girl who was about five years old, and she spoke English like the wind." Doorbell. Everyone loved Priest John. He was a happy, jolly fellow, always willing to help or lend a hand. One time, John was walking down the street, humming a tune, when he saw a little boy trying to reach the doorbell of a nearby house. "Hey there, Sonny," said John. "Let me help you out." And with that, John reached out and pressed the bell. Anything else I can do for you? Asked John with a smile. Yes, said the boy. Run! We've only got a few seconds before they come. Is this my train? No, it belongs to the railway company. Don't try to be funny. I meant to ask if I can take this train to New Delhi. No, madam. I'm afraid it's too heavy. Soap. The teacher asked, "John, what are four basic elements in nature?" John answered, "Fire, air, soil, and 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 what?" The teacher asked, "Try to remember." And, and, and. John was embarrassed. The teacher knew that his pupil couldn't remember that the fourth element was water. Therefore, he gave a hint. "What do you clean your hands with?" John excitedly screamed, "Soap!" High fever. My four-year-old daughter had a terrible case of the flu. She was achy, had a high fever, and was terribly hoarse. After waiting in the waiting room at the doctor's office for over an hour, we were finally admitted to see the doctor. After the usual routine of listening to her breathing and checking her ears. The doctor looked my daughter in the eye and said, "So, what would you say is bothering you the most?" Without skipping a beat, my daughter promptly answered, "Billy, he always breaks my toys." Country politics. A busload of politicians. Were driving down a country road when suddenly the bus ran off the road and crashed into an old farmer's barn. The old farmer got off his tractor and went to investigate. Soon he dug a hole and buried the politicians. A few days later, the local police came out. Saw the crashed bus, and asked the old farmer where all the politicians had gone. The old farmer told him he had buried them. The police asked the old farmer, "Lordy, were they all dead?" The old farmer said, "Well, some of them said they weren't." But you know how those crooked politicians lie. Friends, a woman didn't come home one night. The next morning, she told her husband that she had slept over at a friend's house. The man called his wife's ten best friends. None of them knew anything about it. A man didn't come home one night. 
The next morning, he told his wife that he had slept over at a friend's house. So the wife called her husband's ten best friends. Eight of them confirmed that he had slept over, and two said he was still there. Because of the sign, the teacher asked, Why are you late for school? Because of the sign. What sign? The sign that says, School ahead, go slow. The turtles. Once there were three turtles. One day, they decided to go on a picnic. When they got there, they realized they had forgotten the soda. So the youngest turtle said he would go home and get it if they wouldn't eat the sandwiches until he got back. A week went by, then a month, finally a year, when the two turtles said, Oh, come on, let's just eat the sandwiches. Suddenly, the little turtle popped up from behind a rock and said, If you do, I won't go. I love you. A man was out for a drink with his wife one night, and he said, I love you. The wife asked, Is that you or the beer talking? He said, It's me. I'm talking to the beer. Lawyer on Vacation A lawyer was on vacation in a small farming town. While walking through the streets on a quiet Sunday morning, he came upon a large crowd gathered by the side of the road. Going by instinct, the lawyer figured that there was some sort of auto collision. He was eager to get to the injured parties, but couldn't get near the car. Being a clever sort, he started shouting loudly, Let me through! Let me through! I am the son of the victim! The crowd made way for him, and lying in front of the car was a donkey. A young girl at school is being told by the teacher, You never get anything right, complains the teacher. What kind of job do you think you'll get when you leave school? And the child replies, I want to work on TV as a weather girl. Too much speeding. A police officer in a small town stopped a motorist who was speeding down Main Street. But officer, the man began, I can explain. Just be quiet, snapped the officer. I'm going to let you cool your heels in jail until the chief gets back. But officer, I just wanted to say, and I said to keep quiet, you're going to jail. A few hours later, the officer looked in on his prisoner and said, Lucky for you that the chief's at his daughter's wedding. He'll be in a good mood when he gets back. Don't count on it, answered the fellow in the cell. I'm the groom. Does your dog bite? A man walks into a pub and sits down next to a man with a dog at his feet. Does your dog bite? No. A few minutes later, the dog takes a huge chunk out of his leg. I thought you said your dog didn't bite, the man says indignantly. That's not my dog. Five rules. One, money cannot buy happiness, but it's more comfortable to cry in a Mercedes than on a bicycle. Two, Forgive your enemies, but remember their names. Three, help someone when they are in trouble, and they will remember you when they're in trouble again. Four, 
Many people are alive only because it's illegal to shoot them. Five, alcohol does not solve any problems, but then neither does milk. Lost again. A man approached a very beautiful woman in a large supermarket and asked, "You know, I've lost my wife here in the supermarket. Can you talk to me for a couple of minutes?" "Why?" she asked. "Because every time I talk to a beautiful woman, my wife appears out of nowhere." Clever driver. A police officer stops a man for speeding. Good evening, sir. Would you mind showing me your driving license? And the man replies angrily. I wish you guys could get your act together. Just yesterday, you took away my license, and now you expect me to show it to you. Boss wants too much. For thirty years, Johnson had arrived at work at nine a.m. on the dot. He had never missed a day and was never late. Consequently, when on one particular day nine a.m. passed without Johnson's arrival, it caused a sensation. All work ceased, and the boss himself, looking at his watch and muttering, came out into the corridor. Finally, precisely at ten, Johnson showed up, clothes dusty and torn, his face scratched and bruised, his glasses bent. He limped painfully to the time clock, punched in, and said, aware that all eyes were upon him, "I tripped and rolled down two flights of stairs in the subway." Nearly killed myself, and the boss said, "And to roll down two flights of stairs took you a whole hour." Fishing. Saturday morning, I got up early, put on my long johns, dressed quietly, made my lunch, grabbed the dog, slipped quietly into the garage to hook up the boat to the truck, and proceeded to back out into a torrential downpour. There was snow mixed with the rain, and the wind was blowing at fifty miles per hour. I pulled back into the garage, turned on the radio, and discovered that the weather would be bad throughout the day. I went back into the house, quietly undressed, and slipped back into bed. There, I cuddled up to my wife's back, now with a different anticipation, and whispered, "The weather out there is terrible." She sleepily replied, "Can you believe my stupid husband is out fishing in that crap?" In life, there are two things to worry about: either you are well or you are sick. If you are well, then there is nothing to worry about. But if you are sick, there are only two things to worry about: either you get well or you die. If you get well, There is nothing to worry about. But if you die, there are only two things to worry about: either you will go to heaven or to hell. If you go to heaven, then there is nothing to worry about. But if you go to hell, you'll be so damn busy shaking hands with friends you won't have time to worry. One afternoon. A wealthy lawyer was riding in the back of his limousine when he saw two men eating grass by the roadside. He ordered his driver to stop, and he got out to investigate. He asked one of the men, "Why are you eating the grass?" "We don't have money for food," the poor man replied. "Oh, come along with me then," instructed the lawyer. The man answered, "But sir." I have a wife and two children. Bring them along," replied the lawyer. The lawyer turned to the other man and said, "Come with us." But sir, I have a wife and six children," the second man answered. "Bring them as well," replied the lawyer as he headed for his limo. They all climbed into the limo. Once underway, one of the poor fellows says. Sir, you are too kind. Thank you for taking all of us with you. The lawyer replied, "No problem. The grass at my house is almost a foot tall." 
Cat competition. Four men were bragging about how smart their cats are. The first man was an engineer. The second man was an accountant. The third man was a chemist, and the fourth was a government employee. To show off, the engineer called to his cat, "T Square, do your stuff." T Square pranced over to the desk, took out some paper and a pen, and promptly drew a circle, a square, and a triangle. Everyone agreed that was pretty smart, but the accountant said that his cat could do better. He called his cat and said, "Spreadsheet, do your stuff." Spreadsheet went out into the kitchen and returned with a dozen cookies. He divided them into four equal piles of three cookies each. Everyone agreed that was good. But the chemist said that his cat could do better. He called his cat and said, "Measure, do your stuff." Measure got up, walked over to the fridge, took out a quart of milk, got a ten-ounce glass from the cupboard, and poured exactly eight ounces without spilling a drop. Everyone agreed that was good. Then the three men turned to the government employee and asked, "What can your cat do?" The government worker called to his cat and said. Coffee break. Do your stuff. Coffee break. Jumped to his feet, ate the cookies, drank the milk, crapped on the paper, screwed the other three cats, claimed he injured his back while doing so, filed a grievance report for unsafe working conditions, put in for workers' compensation, and went home for the rest of the day on sick leave. Sneaking in. A man went to the police station, wishing to speak with a burglar who had broken into his house the night before. "You'll get your chance in court," said the desk sergeant. "No, no, no," said the man. "I want to know how he got into my house without waking my wife. I've been trying to do that for years." Picture: You always carry my photo in your handbag to the office. Why? When there is a problem. No matter how impossible, I look at your picture, and the problem disappears. You see how miraculous and powerful I am for you. Yes, I see your picture and say to myself, "What other problem can there be greater than this one?" An idiot. Dad, what is an idiot? An idiot is a person who tries to explain his ideas in such a strange and long way that another person who is listening to him cannot understand him. Do you understand me? No. One wish. A family is driving in their car on a holiday. A frog crosses the road, and the husband, who is driving, Is able to stop the car. He gets out and takes the frog and carries him to the side of the road. Frog is grateful, thanks the man, and tells him that he will grant him a wish. The man says, "Please make my dog win the next dog race." Frog asks to look at the dog, which jumps out of the car. The frog notices that the dog has only got three legs and tells the man he thinks it is almost impossible. To fulfill his wish, and asks that the man will tell him another wish. The man says, "Well, then please help that my wife will win the next beauty contest in the area." Frog asks him to tell his wife to get out of the car. The wife comes out of the car and approaches the frog. The frog turns to the man and says, "Could I please have another look at the dog?" <laughs> Control over wives. Three mates are down at the pub. Bill and Joe are arguing about the amount of control they have over their wives, while the third bloke, Fred, says nothing. After a while, Bill turns to Fred and says, "Well, what about you? What sort of control have you got?" I'll tell you. Fred replies. Just the other night, my missus came crawling to me on her hands and knees. The other two were absolutely amazed. 
What happened then? Joe asked. She said, "Get out from under the bed and fight like a man." <laughs> Stay over one night. A Hindu priest, a rabbi, and a lawyer were driving down the road when the car breaks down. Fortunately, finding a farmhouse nearby, the farmer informed them that he had only one spare room and that it had only two twin beds. They were welcome to it, but one of them had to sleep in the barn. After much discussion. The Hindu volunteered to go to the barn. A few moments later, a knock on the bedroom door, and the Hindu explained that there was a cow in the barn, and cows are sacred, and he could not possibly sleep in the barn with a cow. Annoyed, the rabbi volunteered. A few moments later, a knock on the door. The rabbi explained that there was a pig in the barn, and that he, being very orthodox, Could not possibly spend the evening in the barn with the origin of pork. Finally, the lawyer said he would go to the barn. A few moments later, there was a knock on the door. It was the cow and the pig. <laughs> Last request. Father O'Grady was saying his goodbyes to the parishioners. After his Sunday morning service, as he always does, when Mary Clancy came up to him in tears, "What's boring you so, dear?" inquired Father O'Grady. "Oh, Father, I've got terrible news," replied Mary. "Well, what is it, Mary?" "Well, my husband passed away last night, Father." "Oh, Mary," said the father, "that's terrible. Tell me, Mary." Did he have any last requests? Well, yes, he did, Father. Replied Mary. What did he ask, Mary? Mary replied. He said, "Please, Mary, put down the gun." <laughs> Best kept secret at a dinner party. Several of the guests were arguing whether men or women were more trustworthy. No woman said one man scornfully can keep a secret. I don't know about that," answered a blonde woman guest. "I have kept my age a secret since I was twenty-one." "You'll let it out some day," the man insisted. "I hardly think so," responded the blonde lady. When a woman has kept a secret for twenty-seven years, she can keep it forever. <laughs> the vampire bat. A vampire bat came flapping in from the night, covered in fresh blood, and parked himself on the roof of the cave to get some sleep. Pretty soon, all the other bats smelled the blood and began hassling him about where he got it. He told them to go away, and let him get some sleep. But they persisted until he finally gave in. Okay, follow me," he said, and flew out of the cave with hundreds of bats behind him. Down through a valley they went, across a river, and into a forest of trees. Finally, he slowed down, and all the other bats excitedly milled around him. Now, do you see that tree over there?" he asked. "Yes, yes, yes." The bats all screamed in a frenzy. "Good," said the first bat, "because I didn't." <laughs> Fees. A lawyer's dog, running around town unleashed, heads for a butcher shop and steals a roast. The butcher goes to the lawyer's office and asks, "If a dog running unleashed steals a piece of meat from my store." Do I have a right to demand payment for the meat from the dog's owner? The lawyer answers, "Absolutely." Then you owe me eight dollars and fifty cents. Your dog was loose and stole a roast from me yesterday. The lawyer, without a word, writes the butcher a check for eight dollars and fifty cents. The butcher, having a feeling of satisfaction, leaves. Three days later, 
The butcher finds a bill from the lawyer. Under dollars due for a consultation. <laughs> Life after death. Do you believe in life after death? The boss asked one of his employees. Yes, sir. The new recruit replied. Well then, that makes everything just fine. The boss went on. After you left early yesterday to go to your grandmother's funeral, she stopped in to see you. <laughs> Day off. So you want a day off? Let's take a look at what you're asking for. There are 365 days per year available for work. There are 52 weeks per year in which you have already two days off per week, leaving 261 days available for work. Since you spend 16 hours each day away from work, you have used up 170 days. Leaving only 91 days available, you spend 30 minutes each day on a coffee break, which counts for 23 days each year, leaving only 68 days available. With the one-hour lunch each day, you used up another 46 days, leaving only 22 days available for work. You normally spend two days per year on sick leave. This leaves you only 20 days per year available for work. We are off five holidays per year, so your available working time is down to 15 days. We generously give you 14 days vacation per year, which leaves only one day available for work. And I'll be darned if you are going to take that day off. Identify. Just look at that young person with the short hair and blue jeans. Is it a boy or a girl? It's a girl. She's my daughter. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were her father. I'm not. I'm her mother. <laughs> That's not it. A general noticed one of his soldiers behaving oddly. The soldier would pick up any piece of paper he found, frown, and say, "That's not it," and put it down again. This went on for some time, until the general arranged to have the soldier psychologically tested. The psychologist concluded that the soldier was deranged, and wrote out his discharge from the army. The soldier picked it up, smiled, and said, "That's it." <laughs> A smart drunk. A man was pulled over for driving too fast, even though he thought he was driving just fine. You were speeding. No, I wasn't. Yes, you were. I'm giving you a ticket. But I wasn't speeding. Tell that to the judge. The officer gives the man the ticket. Would I get another ticket if I called you a jerk? Yes, you would. What if I just thought that you were? I can't give you a ticket for what you think. Fine. I think you're a jerk. <laughs> the first three years of marriage. In the first year of marriage, the man speaks and the woman listens. In the second year, the woman speaks and the man listens. In the third year, they both speak and the neighbors listen. <laughs> Only one question. An interviewer said, "I shall either ask you ten easy questions or one really difficult question. Think well before you make up your mind." The boy thought for a while and said, "My choice is one really difficult question." Well, good luck to you. You have made your own choice. Now tell me this: What comes first, day or night? The boy was jolted into reality as his admission depended on the correctness of his answer. But he thought for a while and said, 
It's the day, sir. How? the interviewer asked. Sorry, sir. You promised me that you would not ask me a second difficult question. He was selected for IIM. <laughs> Good news. The doctor took his patient into the room and said, I have some good news and some bad news. The patient said, Give me the good news. They're going to name a disease after you. <laughs> Payback time. A man left for work one Friday afternoon. But, being payday, instead of going home, he stayed out the entire weekend partying with the boys and spending his entire paycheck. When he finally appeared at home, Sunday night, he was confronted by a very angry wife and was berated for nearly two hours with a tirade befitting his actions. Finally, his wife stopped the nagging and simply said to him, how would you like it if you didn't see me for two or three days? To which he replied, That would be fine with me. Monday went by and he didn't see his wife. Tuesday and Wednesday came and went with the same results. But on Thursday, the swelling went down just enough where he could see her a little out of the corner of his left eye. <laughs> The Best Liar Two boys were arguing when the teacher entered the room. The teacher says, Why are you arguing? One boy answers, We found a $10 bill and decided to give it to whoever tells the biggest lie. You should be ashamed of yourselves, said the teacher. When I was your age, I didn't even know what a lie was. The boy gave the $10 to the teacher. <laughs> Try to explain women. A man dies and goes to heaven. He gets to meet God and asks God if he can ask him a few questions. Sure, God says. Go right ahead. Okay, the man says. Why did you make women so pretty? God says, so you would like them. Okay, the guy says. But how come you made them so beautiful? So you would love them, God replies. The man ponders a moment and then asks, But why did you make them such airheads? God says, So they would love you. <laughs> Start running. A lawyer and his brother were hunting. A mountain lion jumped out in front of them and started snarling. The brother said, What should we do? The lawyer said, I'm going to run for it. The brother said, You can't outrun a mountain lion. The lawyer said, I don't have to outrun him. I only have to outrun you. <laughs> Hypnosis. A famous hypnotist was performing in a large auditorium full of students one night. He began to speak in a soft and steady voice over the loudspeaker system. Listen to the sound of my voice. He kept repeating. The sound of my voice. Every word is a command. The sound of my voice. Pretty soon, he had every single student in the audience completely mesmerized, each one hanging on his every word. Needing to go out for a moment, he announced, I will have to leave the stage for a moment. But you will all remain in a trance while I am gone. And then he repeated the words, The sound of my voice. Every word is a command. As he turned to go, he tripped over the microphone cord, landed on his butt, and yelled, Shit! <laughs>